In this video, I want to talk about the benefits and also the importance of responsiveness. Well, why is this? Well, most people today, they're awful with responsiveness. Uh, think about that Slack message you sent earlier this week and you've yet to get a response. Or uh, maybe you're thinking about hiring a, a potential contractor on Thumbtack and you have yet to get a response. Uh, all of this is testament that most people today, they are not great communicators. And so I wanna use this video to address the remedy to poor communication. And again, that is responsiveness. All right, I'll see you on the other side. I'm Scott Schwartley, and thank you for joining me in this conversation as we unpack the benefits and the importance of responsiveness. So specifically for our conversation today, I wanna to walk you through three benefits of responsiveness, uh, and also kind of as a side benefit, we'll showcase the importance of it as well. So let's get into it. Here's number one, responsiveness showcases respect. So this whole area about responsiveness showcasing respect, uh, it really can be broken down into three main core areas of focus here. One is a respect for others, a respect for yourself, uh, and respect for the organization. So I'm gonna just break these down really, really quick. So let's talk about respect for others. So if you think about that message that you've sent out, whether it's an email, a Slack message, or, or something equivalent, and you've yet to get a response, what emotions typically bubble up to the surface? Well, it's usually uh, questions of, of, or sorry, emotions of uh, doubt or maybe insecurity that may kind of evolve into resentment or anger, um, where you are left to, you're left to feeling kind of unheard or, or not listened to. And so those who do practice responsiveness understand that. They understand that they don't want to put the recipient um, into that feeling of self-doubt or resentment. So they have a respect respect for those that they actually work with. Um, that's one great benefit of, of responsiveness. Number two, there's a respect for yourself that if you are someone that has a responsiveness mindset, you're going to have templates, you're going to have autoresponders, you're going to have things that free you up to, to focus on other stuff outside of, of your daily you know commitments and, and work. Um, so it's actually by being responsive, you would think that person who's bombarded and their inbox is full, that they're just responding all day long. Um, it's actually the opposite of that, that if you actually have a respect for yourself, your time or your commitment to your family, um, you will have templates in place that allow you to be on top of your communication that will allow you to be responsive. So, and benefit there is you're actually respecting yourself. And then ultimately, the third thing, as I mentioned, is respecting your organization. Uh, let's face it, uh, we are all generally employees where we're working for a much larger uh, organization or company. And kind of the sad reality is that company is making an investment on you. They are putting money into you and they're hoping they're gonna get a return on that. So if you think about really solid companies, like I know back in the day, Zappos was really known for great customer service. Your organization expects you to be responsive. They expect you to be a great communicator, uh, both internally and externally, uh, specifically are talking to customers or clients or just you know outside constituents. So. If you are responsive, which is generally what your organization is going to desire, uh, you are showcasing a healthy respect uh, for the organization. All right, let's move into number two, and that's how responsiveness can really level up anything or everything in, in this case. So for this section, uh, I want to focus on the three B's of responsiveness. Now, I could go into a very long-winded lecture if I want to on this one. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid doing that, but I'll, I'll kind of land the plane on this. But really, at its core, responsiveness is really centered around three things, particularly with this whole idea of how it's going to grow your brand, whether, again, you're working for yourself, you're working for an organization, you're working for a department. If you focus on these three Bs, it will shed some light on the power of responsiveness. So uh, the three Bs are this, build, boost, and bloom. Um, so here's what I mean by this. If you practice responsiveness, if you stay on top of your communication, if you do the opposite of what most people do today and actually get back to your, your text messages and your Slack messages and your emails, it will build your business. Um, again, whether it's a department, an organization, or you personally, by being more responsive, your end customer is going to appreciate you for it. It will build your business. From that, it's going to boost your business. So you will start seeing more word of mouth uh, activity. You will start getting more referrals. It's like, hey, you should work with John because he responds to my emails and is great at keeping me updated on a project. Or you should work with Jessica because um, you can get a hold of her whenever you need to um, and you'll constantly be aware of where your project's at and the status of it and so forth. 
you will see a boost um, from that activity by being more responsive. Now, again, I'm not saying you need to live next to your phone. I'm not saying you need to live on your laptop. You've got to create templates and autoresponders and all that. That's a conversation for another day. You've got to be able to manage that so you can still be proactive uh, or reactive in a good way. Uh, but again, um, by being responsive, it will boost your business. And ultimately, you're going to get the third B, which is your business will bloom. Uh, it will take off, it will blossom, uh, you will start hitting the results that you want because of all the activity uh, earlier. Again, word of mouth, referrals, and so forth. Uh, your business really should start to blossom from all that activity. All right, let's talk about number three. Responsiveness builds great work cultures. Uh, again, whether you're an organization or you're a small team or you're one person with maybe one or two freelancers, that there's culture in all of that. So however you want to define that, responsiveness builds great cultures. Again, just like the three Bs of responsiveness, um, I can get really long-winded about uh, what I like to call the five Cs of actually how to implement uh, responsiveness, uh, either for yourself or for your team or for your department. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of abbreviate these for you here. Uh, but these are the five Cs of how to implement responsiveness uh, into your team. So let me go through these really quick. So the five C's are create, commit, communicate, cultivate, and check in. So I'm gonna go through this really, really fast. So the first one is create. So uh, if you want responsiveness to be a work ethic, if you want it to be a core value, then you actually have to roll up your sleeves and go through the effort of actually creating the policies and the procedures of what it actually is and what it looks like. And so imagine the end game. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? What does responsiveness look like for you and your team? And actually start the creation process. All right, once you've done that, it gets into number two, which is committing. So you need to commit to that task at hand. So uh, whatever meetings you need to have, uh, you know, whatever you know, groups you need to get together, uh, you need to get buy-in and you need to start committing to the process. Um, so again, I can get a lot more long-winded about this. I'm keeping this very high level, very big picture. Uh, but that's the first one. Um, you know, create it, then commit to it. Uh, and then number three, uh, you want to uh, communicate it. So with communicating, you've got to go, uh, you know, up, down, across. You've got to communicate it to everybody and make sure that uh, your ex expectations are clear uh, across the board. Then you have to cultivate it. Um, as the saying goes, I, I can't remember where I heard this from, but it's the whole idea of vision leaks. You constantly have to remind people of this vision of responsiveness. Um, and you've got to get in front of their face over and over again. You yourself have to practice it and set the example and set the tone for your team or your organization. And again, constantly cultivate it. And then ultimately, it's about checking in. Uh, you know, just like any great initiative or campaign, uh, you've got to measure it. You've got to make sure that, um, you know, if something's working, then do more of it. If something's not working, do less of it. Uh, but measure, uh, Measure, uh, that, that's kind of the key theme here, is measure the success of it, check in regularly, you know, ideally maybe once a quarter, um, and uh, adjust where it's needed. But by doing this, hopefully, uh, it will become a common rhythm, in, uh, a healthy rhythm in the, the flow of your business. All right, so those are the five C's of actually how to implement it, uh, implement responsiveness into your work culture. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up. So responsiveness can obviously be a game changer for any person and for any organization. It's just gonna take a little bit of a proactive effort on your end uh, to, to make it kind of part of your organizational or personal DNA. Uh, so good luck as you do it, uh, but hopefully you're gonna see amazing results from it. And remember, I mean, status quo right now, most people, again, as we mentioned in the beginning, they're horrible communicators. They're terrible at responding in a timely fashion. So if you can simply embrace and practice this art, um, you will see tremendous results from it. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.